Okay, the millennium is the rule of the Messiah. It says in verses four to six that they live and reign with Christ for a thousand years. This is the biggest piece of the Old Testament. Uh, 28% of the Old Testament is prophetic and a vast amount of the 28% are these passages. Look, look what it says. The millennium covers 40 chapters of the Old Testament. The millennium, there are promises to David, three chapters about the millennium. Second Sam, remember his, his son, the son of David, would sit on the throne of David and rule. Uh, and that's in 2 Samuel 7, 2 Samuel 23, Psalm 89 is all about it. Then it's predicted in the Psalms and Prophets, 31 chapters are about the millennium. Psalm 2, he will rule with a rod of iron. Do you remember all that that you've read? Psalm 45, Psalm 110, Isaiah 2 talks about the, the transformation. So does 4 and 11 and 12 and 30. 35 is a huge millennial chapter, and it's long, it's 60 verses. Um, Chapter 61, chapter 66, I mean, let's just go to Isaiah 66. This, you talk about a verse that's fascinating. Remember Isaiah? If I was teaching Isaiah, I would tell you that Isaiah is a miniature Bible. How many chapters are in Isaiah? How many books are in the Bible? How many books are in the Old Testament? And the first 39 chapters of Isaiah are just like the Old Testament. And look, in chapter 40, we find John the Baptist, the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Isaiah is like a miniature Bible, but wait a minute. Who put the chapter divisions in? Bishop Langton in the 1200s. So you have to be very careful about all the people that do these interesting studies that say because uh, all these verses have verse 66 and verse 6 and verse 16 and all this, and they make all these codes up from the Bible, and you can immediately be skeptical because the verse numbers were not put in the Bible till the 16th century by Robert Stephanus, a printer in Geneva. And the chapter divisions were not put in the Bible until the 1200s by Bishop Stephen Langton, who, who divided the huge Bible up into chapters, into 1189 chapters, so that the people, he was the Archbishop of Canterbury, the Church of England, the Anglican Church in England, and he did it so they could read the Bible through in a year, and he, he gave them these little divisions so they wouldn't get, you know, that's how we got read three chapters or however many chapters to read through, thanks to Langton, who, by the way, also helped write the final edition of the Magna Carta. You've heard of the Great Charter of England. So, I mean, this guy was helping the church and helping civilization and everything else, but the 66th chapter is about, of Isaiah, and it, it's about the millennium and goes beyond. And it says in verse 22, for as the new heavens and the new earth which I shall make remain before me, says the Lord. That's exactly how chapter 21 of Revelation starts. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth right out of Isaiah. So your descendants and your name remain, and it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, from one Sabbath to another, what? what, what? In heaven? They have Jewish stuff? I thought the church replaced Israel. Did you know in heaven and during the millennium we revert back to Sabbaths, feasts, priests? Wow. See, there's so much people that only read the New Testament don't even know about what God's going to do because all scriptures are given by inspiration of God. All scriptures are profitable for doctrine and reproof and for correction and instruction and righteousness. But that's not all it says. Look at verse 23. Um, all flesh shall come and worship before me, says the Lord, and they shall go forth and look on the corpses of the men who have transgressed against me, for their worm does not die. What? Their worm does not die? I think I've heard that somewhere. That's exactly what Jesus says in the book of Mark when he's talking about the valley of Hinnom and hell. That's where hell comes from, Gehenna, Gehinnom, the valley of Hinnom. And Jesus is talking right from Isaiah, and that's what we find in Revelation 20, the lake of fire. Their fire is not quenched, and they shall be in horrors to all flesh. And you say, could you explain all that? Yep, if you come to my Isaiah class, I will, but we're in Revelation, so keep going. The promise to Mary, thirdly, Luke talks about her son sitting on the throne of David, Micah, uh, whose goings forth have been of old from everlasting. All of these are millennial promises. And then look at the Lord's Prayer. 
that thy kingdom come is talking about not just me every day surrendering to the Lord, but it's talking about this, the, the visible rule of God, which is first manifest in the millennium and all that. But let's just distill down those 40 chapters to one chart. This is what happens in the millennium. Creation is changed. Zechariah tells us the physical changes. Isaiah tells us the curse is lifted, not removed, lifted. Uh, creation is redeemed. Do you remember Paul says in Romans 8 that all the universe is groaning? The whole universe is groaning. Uh, we call it the laws of entropy. We ta- call it the laws of thermodynamics. But all the universe is headed toward a heat death, toward slowing down until it finally stops. Death. It's groaning. It sees it coming. Uh, it's, it's, uh, Paul talks a lot about that in Romans. Creation starts feeling the, the, the law of sin and death is starting to recede. And the earth is full of the Lord. What he always promised, the whole earth. I mean, he is, well, death and sin are still around, but everybody has their own land and it's fruitful, but it just goes beyond. If you have time to read all 40 of those chapters, I'll tell you some of the fun stuff. One thing is, nobody dies unless they're rebellious. So you get to come for the whole time to God's, you know, paradise. You can live the whole thousand years. Uh, if, if you survive the tribulation and are a believer, you enter the millennium, and you get to live the whole thousand years. But if you, as a believer, rebel, which should be a rarity, or if you're a child of a believer who never becomes a believer and are living in the millennium and rebel, you're cut off. But the Lord, even there, it says in Isaiah, gives them 100 years before he cuts them off. He's kind of saying, come on, come on. Get with the program, but they don't. You know, come to the visitor center and see me and all that. Then it says that... I love this one. The visitor center, I'm going to show you in just a minute, is so massive, it's seven miles by seven miles, that all the world is supposed to come and walk through it. It's kind of like going through the Ark Encounter or the Creation Museum or whatever you can think of. And everybody there and all the exhibits are talking about God. That's what the Millennial Temple is. I'm going to show you what they're going to be teaching them. What happens if people say it's way too far for me to go all the way to Jerusalem? You know, I live in Namibia or I live in, you know, Japan or wherever. I know the world will be changed and, and all that, but there's still people from all the, the nations, it says, and they're all streaming into Jerusalem, and some of them are going to say, it's not interesting to me. They're the rebels, by the way. You know what God does to them? This shows, you talk about society. God says, if you don't come, Isaiah tells us, if you don't come to the visitor center, it will not rain on your field. So here, you plant your crops, and your neighbor plants your crops, and it's all like the sprinklers come on over there, and yours is... And all your neighbors know that you didn't go to Jerusalem like you were supposed to. I mean, that's how curious. I mean, you could spend... uh, My dean, when I went to Bible school, to seminary, his whole dissertation, he spent his years writing his dissertation just on the Millennial Kingdom. And his dissertation was huge. 